Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Joe Biden's approval rating and whether or not he can improve his metrics among the American people before the 2022 midterms or even before a potential re-election bid in 2024. So as it currently stands, Joe Biden is underwater with the broader American public by around 12 points or so, 11 or 12 points. So uh, in terms of other presidents at this point in their presidency, this is fairly low. We can look at Obama's, for instance, where Obama was at around 48 percent. Biden is at just 41. Trump was at 40.2 percent. And in some cases, there are certain areas where it looks like Trump could almost overlap Biden in his unpopularity, which is really bad considering that Biden, uh, you know, was supposed to be a more, you know, respectable, likable president among the American people, but they don't really seem to view it that way. And there are some instances where Biden is basically almost neck and neck with Trump in terms of approval ratings at this point in their presidency. And there could even be an area where Biden goes below Trump's approval rating. You know, George W. Bush, we can look at, he was at an extremely high approval rating because of 9-11. Uh, Bill Clinton had, you know, relatively average approval ratings throughout his term. He was able to win a big re-election in 96. But even Jimmy Carter had a 50% approval rating at this time in his presidency. And of course, we all know he went to go on to lose the 1980 election by a monumental amount. Now, that doesn't mean Joe Biden is going to. American politics has changed a tremendous amount since 1980. But I think Biden's biggest problem going into 2022 or even 2024 is that he doesn't have a energized coalition behind him. He more or less just had an energized coalition against his opponent, Donald Trump, who, you know, despite what the media wants you to think, is really mostly out of the picture. I mean, he may run for president in 2024, but he's been off of social media. He's been off of the news uh, for the most part. And a lot of Americans aren't really thinking that much about him anymore. So, you know, there isn't really this uh, anti-Trump sentiment out out there as there was back in the 2020 election when Joe Biden was able to win the presidency. But Biden has pretty lackluster approval ratings in the states that matter as well. So of course, if Biden is going to improve his approval rating nationwide, he'll have to improve them in the important swing states and even some of the lean red states in order to get a chance at winning the presidency again. So if we look down at various states, we can take a look at um, Georgia, for instance, which was a state that Biden back in 2020 barely won. He was the first Democrat to win there since 1992. If we take a look at his approval rating there, it's 35%, which is a pretty abysmal number considering that he was able to get around 49% of the vote back in 2020. Now, obviously, approval rating doesn't always correlate with election outcomes. Trump was very unpopular in a lot of the swing states. Yet he was still able to win in places like North Carolina, Ohio, almost won Wisconsin, Arizona. So even though Trump was, you know, for instance, Arizona, he was unpopular in some cases by double digits. He was still able to almost win the state. So approval rating doesn't necessarily correlate into votes. However, Biden's margins in a lot of these states were a lot lower than polls had expected. Besides states like Georgia, Arizona, for instance, polls had Biden up ahead by four, even five points. On average, he ended up only winning it by 0.3%. You know, Wisconsin had Biden up by around 6 to 8 points, just like in 2020, uh, 2016. And he only ended up winning it by a very narrow margin of 0.6%. Pennsylvania was a bit closer towards the end. There were polls where he was only winning by, you know, 4 points. So the, you know, margin of error wasn't as big. And of course, Michigan as well, you had Biden up by 6 to 8 points. He only won it by 2.8. So... Polls were one thing, but approval rating is certainly another. Uh, you know, we can go on to Michigan, for instance, where Biden's approval rating isn't even that much better than it was in Georgia. It's 37 percent, according to civics. Now, you know, it might be as high as 40 percent. But overall, a lot of these swing states are reflecting the nation and swing states like Georgia, for instance, uh, basically, you know, show a much more anti-Biden sentiment than other states. And it makes sense because Georgia's margin for Joe Biden was very tiny. You know, states like Michigan uh, had a much larger margin. We can even look at Virginia, which was a state that Biden won by 10 points, a state that had been drifting to the left for a long time. And ultimately, his approval rating there is, you know, about in line with the national average. So, you know, the thing is, Virginia doesn't even vote with the national average. It tends to vote to the left of the national average. So, 
you know, the nation going 51% for Biden, 46 for Trump, you know, a state like Virginia going 54 to 44 for Biden uh, really indicates that if Biden's disapproval is like that in a state like Virginia, which votes left to the nation, it bodes very poorly for him in other states like Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona, Georgia, uh, you know, even Nevada, which are all states that he could potentially lose in 2024 if he does run for re-election. But this is also extremely bad for the midterms because a lot of these uh, states, uh, you know, Pennsylvania, for instance, has a Senate race. Wisconsin has a Senate race. A lot of these states have governor's races. Georgia and Arizona both have Senate races. Uh, these are all states that barely went blue last time around. Of course, you have places like Arizona, which Mark Kelly won by around two points or so. But still, these, point, these states were extremely light blue in 2020 and still voted to the right of the nation. Uh, it's very, very unlikely, given this trajectory, that Democrats are going to be able to hold on to these gains in these states for the short term, at least in 2022, 2024. Obviously, this doesn't negate broader shifts to the left. You'd need to have more evidence for that. But uh, the way things are shaping up right now, it seems that states like Georgia and Arizona will continue to vote to the right of the nation. And if they don't, you know, that's indicative of a broader trend. But Biden's disapproval is mainly due to the fact that his administration hasn't been able to get a lot done. Uh, you know, American the standard of living has gone down under his presidency. It went up shortly after Trump's presidency due to the, you know, COVID economic recovery. And then it kind of has stalled out. And now with, you know, inflation and rising gas prices, it's going down. And a lot of people are angry. And this bodes very poorly for Biden ahead of the midterms. I don't really see the disapproval rate, approval rating changing that much, barring some, you know, insane foreign policy event or domestic policy event or something like that, I think things are relatively going to stay the same. But Biden does seem so far to have a disapproval ceiling of about 53, 54 percent. Now, that may, that might age poorly, uh, you know, in future videos. But for now, that's kind of his ceiling. And his floor seems to be, you know, according to 538, about 40 percent. And if you look at civics, it's like 38 percent. So, you know, by oh, 34 well, this is in Virginia. Anyway, the point is Biden does have kind of a ceiling and a floor right now, which I guess is good that so far Biden hasn't dipped below 40% in 538. There's, of course, polls that have him below 40%, but that would certainly be a disastrous sign for Biden. Uh, you know, Trump even relatively stayed in the high 30s and low 40s throughout his presidency. So Biden being only slightly more popular than Trump uh, isn't enough for him because Biden can't galvanize a democratic base to actually uh, come out and vote for him. Uh, you know, a lot of big policy proposals, the infrastructure bill, uh, the voting rights bill that Democrats were trying to pass all failed in the Senate because of, you know, the 50-50 tie that you have. You have senators like Manchin and Cinema, who are more independent senators, more centrist senators, uh, who sometimes deviate from the Democratic line. And as a result, Biden has been unable to, uh, you know, galvanize them to actually vote for his legislation. He's not able to get anything done to show the American people. Now, of course, those were his big promises, and those are usually what uh, gets presidents their re-elections. If presidents are seen going on to the right track, the nation's going in the right direction, things like that. But for Joe Biden, it doesn't look to be any better either, because Biden's uh, the United States direction of the country polls bode very poorly for him and any hopes of a re-election or Democrats doing well in 2022. Only 28% of people in the RCP average think that the U.S. is headed in the right direction. 64% uh, do not. Now, of course, you have some polls that are dramatic outliers, some polls that don't have third options. But ultimately, this average is probably somewhat accurate. And a lot of times, you know, this is the case. I'm pretty sure even under Obama, you know, these numbers weren't uh, too great. But for Joe Biden, they're particularly poor. And if Americans don't think the country is going to go in the right direction, isn't going in the right direction, they're going to change track. Now, in regard to 2024, if you move all of these states, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Georgia, Arizona, the whole nation, if the entire nation, so this is the 2020 map here, if the entire nation moves just three points to the right, Republicans doing three points better, uh, this is the map that you get. And, you know, it puts Republicans at 312 electoral votes to Democrats 226. This is even worse than Hillary Clinton's defeat in 2016. And this isn't even the worst it could get for Joe Biden or the Democrats. 
and we'll probably make a video shortly about the Democratic primary in the future. But, you know, in order for Biden to bounce back in the poll numbers, he needs to do something dramatic to fix or at least alleviate gas prices, inflation, which we've seen no sign of him really doing. There's some Democrats that want to give out uh, more checks, more stimulus checks related to uh, gas related costs. But I think it's going to be too little too late. And I ultimately don't think Biden is able to uh, is going to be able to seize the moment and actually provide a decent relief for Americans struggling. And, you know, with the ongoing Ukraine crisis and, you know, the economy expected to make a more downward turn, uh, you know, Biden could end up like Trump in the same situation where the economy uh, was doing poorly towards the end of his term and ultimately he ends up losing or his successor ends up losing because whoever runs in 2024 is probably going to be tied with Biden's administration, Democratic policies, you know, and so far I don't see the Democrats really having any strong nominees in 2024. Uh, not that the Republican nominees are very strong either, but sometimes that's all it takes is the backlash effect by the American people to, uh, you know, change leadership and for Republicans to sweep in a lot of these swing states and even some lean blue states that otherwise under normal circumstances wouldn't be up for grabs. So in terms of if Biden can bounce back from the polls, uh, his bad poll numbers, uh, I think it's quite doubtful in 2022. 2024 is a bit more of an open question because there's a lot more time. A lot of things can happen. Uh, you know, back in March, for instance, I don't think a lot of people thought Biden's approval rating was going to go down that much. It was pretty stationary all the way until the Afghanistan withdrawal. And then since then, the American public has soured on Biden, rising gas prices, uh, you know, global instability going on. Uh, doesn't bode well for any current administration. So in terms of whether Biden can bounce back before 2022, I think it's not going to happen. I, I don't really see any way that Biden is going to have a positive approval rating in the aggregate by 2022. And I could be wrong. But I think as of now, the way things are going, it's very, very unlikely for Biden to be able to bounce back in the short term. In the long term, 2024, it's possible. But again, the way things are going with the economy, global events, uh, how Americans view the president, the direction of the country, uh, I think it's very unlikely that Biden's going to be able to uh, recover. And honestly, if I were the Democrats, I would try to field a different candidate to run for re-election rather than Joe Biden. Because Joe Biden, in a lot of these swing states, was barely able to win. He barely won Pennsylvania, only won it by one point, barely won Wisconsin, Arizona, Georgia. You know, had these states all went in the other direction, Trump would be the president. If you change, uh, you know, Wisconsin, Arizona, Georgia, Pennsylvania, it's 291. Even if you get rid of Pennsylvania, it's 272 uh, for the Republicans. So that's all it took was for three states, Georgia, Arizona, and Wisconsin to flip which were all within one point. And if Biden's doing worse off than he was during the 2020 election, then there's almost no chance that he'll be able to win in 2024. So anyway, guys, that's just my breakdown of this. Uh, obviously, comment down below if you disagree or agree. Um, as always, please leave a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification so you don't miss any more videos I put out. And as always, again, thank you all for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.